memory of some of your emails, and they were like the longest emails. Yeah. And and uh, so I feel bad if I didn't respond to some of them. No, that's short okay. is sweet with me. That's okay. I, that's, I, that's the easiest way to get a response. I, I, I've learned as I've gotten older how to shorten them. I, I wasn't the best at it when I was younger. So you know, isn't it funny how like it, it's a lot easier? I've learned this at the athletic. It's a, and you would agree with this, I bet. It's a lot easier to write long than short. Oh God, yeah. yeah I mean, it is. Yeah. You know, like it's it's a lot harder to write a nine hundred square foot, uh, nine hundred word story than a twelve hundred. Oh, opinion. absolutely. You know, so. For sure. Um, so kind of. I don't know why that kind of came to my just popped uh, little, in my head. Little piggybacking off the fumbling pucks question. I, I love my team, but do they practice three on twos and two on ones? Yes, and, they do. Yeah, because <laughs> they're the worst they, in the league. That I can. Whoever little... AJ, that I can promise you. <laughs> From not watching every team, the Wild are the worst odd man rush team in the league, and they've been forever. I mean, there are certain guys on the team when they are leading an odd man rush, and they're some of their most skilled players. When they're leading the odd man rush, you just know the way it's going to end. I By the way, I just got a uh, I just got a message from Vicky. Uh, you know, usually we start winding down the show now. And people might turn off because they think there's nothing good left. You want to stick around for this, but finish up, Ben. Sorry, uh, and last question: uh, What can the Wild do to get out of Steve Kazari's doc, doc house? I don't know. Probably uh, keep him off Twitter and reading me. I'll be interested to see when he gets another game because I know the league were well aware of my story. Well aware. Thanks, Ben. Yes, Britt. Um. So, I mean, this is like a hockey adjacent question. Mm-hmm. Um. So, obviously, Michael, you get kind of everybody's opinion about every player and who's in our collective fan. Good thing is it doesn't bother him. <laughs> right, exactly. I know you love all of our feedback about who we're happy with I do. And who you we're know, Sony on my, on my uh, comment section of my article the other day wrote, like, and I don't even know if I responded. I almost did, but it wasn't going to be kind. Said so something like, this is why Russo hates fans. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, like, I mean... Well, one of the how, problems how, with Twitter, how could I be a sports writer if you hate fans? I mean, what would I would not be a sports writer if it wasn't for the fans. We don't hate fans. You're writing for the fans. But You're talking to the fans. Social You're, media, you usually get hit with yeah, the uh, most angry people. Yeah, I, I, I get that. But if, if there is this belief out there that I hate fans, it's a fallacy. But anyway, continue, Britt. Well, so, yes. But, but if, anybody wants to email me, if anybody wants to email me, I'll send you a list of the fans yeah. he actually does hate. I mean, just because I block every fan that writes me uh, anything negative. No, I'm just kidding. All right, go. Well, I'm not really kidding. Point being that you pretty much know at this point, like at any, well, at any given point, who people are in general are happy with and who they're not. Uh-huh. And I'm wondering, when you publish, like, personality or, like, feature type things, like the Greg Patteron story, mm-hmm. the Suter story... Do you notice any correlation between those like feel good pieces and then how people like perceive those players? Just like so, if yeah. Pattern has a bad game right after you publish that awesome story, yeah, probably, are people easier on? Yeah, him? probably. Really I good mean, question. You can't. You can't. I mean, you can't really gauge that. But I definitely think that's that's definitely uh, you know there's something to that. Um, yeah, I, w- I would say I would say I would say that the more players. Uh, fans feel like they know a player and how good of a guy they are off the ice uh, definitely helps it out. I mean, there's a reason why some people love Nate Prosser, um, and and that's a good re- that's a good reason because of all the you know stuff that I've written about him off the ice because he's such a great guy. And there are some people that are just the hardcore fans. I was in I was in the day that I wrote the Pattern story. The kind of the, the same guy that I asked on Twitter publicly the other day, like, what is wrong with him? Uh, we were in Dallas the other day, and the first tweet I got from, pa- uh, like, five minutes into the game from the guy's like, what, pa- what is it the pattern does? You know, like, what exactly is it? So there's certain people that can't be swayed if they have a belief, which is fine. I mean, that's why they're a hockey fan. Um, but, but again, I don't hate fans. So then on that same note, do you notice any effect um, or, like... I guess as far as management, coaching, like people within the Wild organization, um, do you think that, for example, if a player that's like very beloved in the locker room, like great with the community, et cetera, like one of those, you know, that type of guy, do you feel like they get more leniency as far as like if they're playing poorly or things like that because they are very beloved by the fans and the other guys in the room? Or do you not see any relation to that? No, I mean, I could tell you from Bruce it doesn't. I mean, if you're playing like crap, Bruce is not going to care that Patteron befriended a kid in Dallas or, or things like that. Um, you know, uh, 
sometimes there are players that are in the room that that don't like the amount of publicity that certain guys have. I do hear, I you know, get. I hear that stuff a lot. You know, I mean, you know, I I don't want to say, it, but there are just certain guys. You know, like there's always little snide comments and things like that. The way I fear is that everybody's human being. So what we would think of something like if we think that a player is get, is too exposed, prop chances are guys in the room feel that way too. This is very true. Yeah. You know, um, I can think of one that's on the top of my head right now that people, you know, I, you know, just like, you know, yeah, whatever. <sighs> Should we end the show with Vicky's comment that's going to drive me crazy? Well, from the man who brought you the, uh, the injured finger caused by pulling up his sock, we now have, via Vicky, uh, Michael, last summer, pulled a muscle reaching for his plugged-in and charging phone, hoping it was a trade scoop, only to see someone wishing him happy birthday. True? I think so. <laughs> I don't remember that. I think it is true. Should we end the show? <laughs> <laughs> Vicky enjoys Steamboat Springs. Why is she uh, chatting? Chris, you haven't asked a question. She can't tonight. quit. You know, he's trying to change the subject. Here comes Chris to change the subject. We will. Call- the show's only been two hours long. Anybody else? We will make this the Russo final thought. This will be it, and then you can what stop happened? feeling awkward. Go ahead, Chris. Is it on? Okay. Well, it's only one hour long because it took you guys about half an hour to fit, you know, set up. That's a good point. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, this is kind of a mock question. I was going to ask last week uh, or last time or. Why you're such a Parisi apologist, but uh, that's not really a, a play. Apologist for what? The joke. wild? It's, it was a joke. <laughs> Some guy on Twitter the other day used the hashtag Homer. I lost my mind on that guy. I think I, I wrote him back. He is, it's like a it's like a forty year old doing a selfie at a gym, and I, and I just wrote him back. I said, "Did you see that one?" Yeah, what a little prick. <laughs> so I said, I wrote the guy back. I said, aren't, you, I said, aren't guys sub- supposed to stop taking selfies at a gym at age 16? Yeah, that, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like it. And Brandon, don't edit that one out. It's, if anybody's stuck around this long, they deserve to hear Michael say prick. Yeah. That's my final thought. That's your final thought. That's it, Chris. That was it. That was that's really it. the question. All right. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. Thanks to everybody who tuned in to hear Michael cuss and get mad at, because he hates fans. And he called, yeah. just called one, he just called one a prick. So obviously he hates fans. Yeah. I think it's where we can end this show. That's true. That guy, I don't like. <laughs> so, St. Louis is up one nothing, by the way, so Mike Yo is safe. Changing the subject. Hey, thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Please give Michael a hand, and thank you all for helping the network uh, be a success. in the bars and fire in the sky We went to the beach and it was covered in ice And I used to call it home So much coming out there's nothing going in I know that you feel like you're never going to win Oh, but the world won't forgive a winner. Uh, from Russo's slacks. Uh.